I met a young man by the name of Issa and he described his story to us. He had fallen ill and the diagnosis was Ebola, so he was sent into a treatment center and he spent a few weeks there on the edge of life and death. He did survive um, and he himself said, I don't know how, but he survived. And of course, the incredible sense of relief that he has come through that. Then he went home and he found the house locked. And neighbors told him that all his relatives who lived in that house with him, all 12 of them had died. He was the only survivor. And hearing that, of course, very difficult to take in. But just to start to imagine what he is going through and what, like him, thousands of people are going through having lost so many loved ones and having to face life again. And yeah, you just have to find a way. You have to find a way, livelihood. You have to find the support. And I'm glad to say that uh, partners in, on the ground in Sierra Leone are trying to provide that support. But I don't think we can heal all the scars. Last week I was in Sierra Leone. I visited the work there that is being done by the ACT Alliance, my own organization as well, as part of the ACT Alliance. Um, we have focused our work on working with families in quarantine and survivors of Ebola. We made an early decision not to get involved in treatment because we leave treatment to the experts. We are not medical experts. But as has become increasingly apparent, working with uh, people in quarantine, so people who have had family members who were infected with Ebola and who are put under quarantine by the government, at first there was absolutely no service whatsoever for these people. So they were locked in their houses without food, without income. They couldn't go out anyway to buy things. And because they didn't have anything, they would escape. And that contributed uh, probably to the spread of Ebola. Now we have worked with the, those families in quarantine, providing them with basics. Uh, food items and some non-food items, sanitary items. Um, and increasingly, which is a bit of good news really, working with survivors. Because while Ebola kills a lot of people, thankfully some people survive. But then those people survive and they come back to nothing. Because they've often lost family members, parents, siblings, children. Um, they have often been evicted from their houses, or if their houses are still there, those have been disinfected. So nothing survives. The mattresses have been burned, all their utensils have gone. Their paperwork, identity cards, school diplomas, all of that is gone because it has been treated with chlorine solution and it disintegrates. So these people come back out of a hospital setting, glad to have survived, and then they come back to nothing and actually the aftercare of the, the survivors has been very poor because all the emphasis has gone into treatment. So we decided very early on that we need to work with survivors and that is what we continue to do and we'll have to ramp up in the coming weeks and months because this problem is going to be with us for a long time to come.